Hi everyone, welcome to Lead Code Weekly Contest 301. Um, let's get into it. Let's get... Okay, so my goal is, my long time goal is to come second, because I actually want to win the second place prize. Two, two cups, two different types of water. Oh, okay. <coughs> no, anyone? Good shit. Nope, what is this? Oh, why am I plus two? So, what do I want? Positive juice. So, if I popped it, then why is it gone? What's going on? Do I not know how to use heap pop? What? <coughs> uh, whatever, we'll just use C++. What? <coughs> oh.
that was so slow. All right, that was so bad. Okay, this is like some harmonic something. Maybe not. Distinct idea, okay. Because I wonder if, like, yeah, that's probably not going to work. There might not be that many ways to. Okay, there might not be that many ways to do it because max value is so small. Okay, we're gonna use Python because I think it's easier.
Let's do that. Okay, one plus zero times max value. Let's, let's see. Let's pass it full step. Yes. Okay, so it was like I take one buzz. Which is all. And take one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's take one. Ten, eleven. Okay, I see. That was pretty slow.
yeah, I figured there'll be very fast people. I had a very bad question too. Hopefully, so I, I beat this guy at least. So hopefully, I can still be top, top, summer now, which is not too bad. Okay, let's go through the answers. Okay, and th this one is just a greedy problem, basically. Of, of the three types, obviously we want to prioritize using two different cups since that's more efficient. And which two cups should you choose? You should choose the two types of cup that there's most of. So if there's, in this case, for example, um, since there's four warm cups and two hot cups, in your first move you would choose um, the warm and the hot cup. You wouldn't choose the... Um, yeah, that's, be that's because, like... I, I don't really know how to explain, but um, you kind of want to use the one that you have most of because otherwise if you use the ones that you have not enough of, you might get left over with only one type of cup and then you can only do this operation. So that's why you basically want to keep trying this one. Since the constraints are really small, we can just simulate that. Whilst there's at least two types of cups, um, that's basically what this while condition means, while there's at least two different types of cups, I will take the two biggest types of cups, subtract one from each of them, add one second, and we will resort them. And then at the end, we have to add in any operations for the um, remaining cups. That could probably also be A too. Yeah. Okay, this one, like, I don't know, I was just really bad at implementation. Pretty much the important thing is... Um, well, we only need to keep track of the first, like, 1,000 things. It's, since there's only 1,000 calls, even if every operation is pop, um, we will only require the first 1,000 numbers. So we can just put all 1,000 numbers into a set and then literally do what it says. When we pop, we take the first element of the set, erase it, and return it. And when we add it back in, we just insert it back into the set. That's it. Okay. So the conditions in this problem is, obviously... Um, the tokens can't, uh, the pieces can't swap with each other. So if this piece is on the left of this piece, then they'll never be able to swap um, which one goes first. So, for example, if this start is LRR, then target must also have LRR in that order. So the first thing I do is this function just gets the pieces and returns the positions, the positions and types. So first I'm checking that they have the same length and all of the pieces are the same. If the pieces aren't the same, then you'll return false. Otherwise, then we can pair up. We know that this L is going to go with this L, this R will go with this R and so on. What we need to make sure is that this L is at least on the, it's on somewhere on this left side. This R must be somewhere on the right side of this one. This R must be somewhere on the right side of this one. So it's pretty clear if, if a piece is left and you you need to go right, then you can't do it. If a piece needs to go right, and you, if the piece is of the type right, and you need to go left, you can't do it. Otherwise, you can do it. Okay, rank 12, which is not great, but... Does this include China? It does include China, at least. Okay. Okay, so the key observation is... Um, let's just try, um, the number of distinct elements can't be greater than like 14 or 13 or something. And that's because um, f for distinct elements, it, each time you go from one element to the next different type of element, that must at least double. And you can only double log amount of times before you exceed the max value. So the way I've done it is let dpi dpi equals max number of so okay so so d we want to calculate dpi equals the number of sequences of length i which are like um distinct so that so they don't complain don't contain duplicates so in our original problem they can contain duplicates but now we will just focus on what if they don't contain duplicates well we can have another DP. We can have res j equals to, so far, how, how many sequences can I have ending at j? Um, initially, 
uh, and the way I've done this is it's sort of a bottom up DP, but and it's a two dimensional DP, but I'm using a one dimensional array, and you can do this sometimes with bottom up DP. But basically, um, at the start, res will be what happens when the sequences have length one, and then then I will process the whole res array until it's now filled with how many sequences of length two can I have in upper j, and then three, then four, all the way up to i. So that's why I do this in i take one stages because this is the already answer for sequences of length one, and then I need to do the rest in stages. For the rest in stages, it's pretty. It's it's actually pretty simple. It's just for each element, for each multiple of that element, I'll increase the new dp by the old dp of the other value. And that's really it. Um, yeah. And then the res, this bit just like, this is like the, if you've ever seen like two layer dp, this is like the previous layer and this is like the current layer. So that's why I put it back into the previous layer. Then, um, then I need to make actually answer the question. So if I have the number of like completely, if I have the number of arrays with no duplicates of length X, how can I use that to contribute to the answer? Well, we can increment that by the number of actual ideal arrays, which contain X unique elements in total. So the number of ways to do that is simply um, the current DP, which is the sum of all our DP values, multiplied by the number of ways um, the number of ways we can allocate um, the number of ways we can allocate each of the um, elements in the ideal array to one of the i unique elements so for example let's say n equals five and let's say my current array is like one two one two three I'm basically asking how many ways can I, um, that's probably bad, let's go one, two, four. Um, I'm saying how many ways could you make a five element array which contain these three distinct elements. So for example, an example might be like one, one, two, two, four, or maybe it's like one, 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 two, four, or something like that. And I ask, I need to multiply by the number of ways to do this. And as that, that turns out, it just tends to be n take one, choose i take one. Um, there's uh, multiple ways to get this formula. The way I thought about it was we just need to choose um, I take one elements where the sequence changes from the previous unique value to the current unique values. So for example, um, in, in this array, like the sequence changes at this at index two and at index four. And in this one, it will change at index four and index five. And that sequence of indexes uniquely determines how we're going to end up. Now, how many ways to do this? Well, the first, well, it must start at the first element. So we don't need to bother about that. But for the remaining I take one value changes, we need them to allocate them to N take one spot. So that's why times by NCR, N take one, I take one. Uh, there's an alternate way to do this with stars and bars. I think it's like, yeah, we basically have like N like boxes and we need to put like, like, I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure of the details, but it's, it's not n boxes. It's like n take i boxes or something like that. And I think you need to put i take one things in the boxes. And then if you use the stars and bars formula, you get the same thing as well. So, so the final thing is time complexity. Why does this work good? Well, it's due to this bit. So the number of times this loop runs, well, when z equals like Oh, sorry, this, this bit. When x equals 1, this j loop will run like m times. When x is 2, this will run like m over 2 times. When x is 3, this will run m over 3 times. And if we keep adding up, um, like, all the way up to um, m, that's, this is the harmonic sum series, which is roughly like m log m. So, so this dp actually only takes m log m times i times. And since this, this will run like 15 times, this will run like 15 times, this will run like 10,000 log 10,000 times, which is good enough. It's barely good enough, but it does work. Um, okay, rank 15, which isn't great. 
I might have gotten top 10 on Elite Code US though. Top 10 is a water bottle. Okay, so that's another water bottle. This will probably decrease my rating by a few points, but anyway, that's all I have done for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.